Well, we've ventured over to Clock Face yet again. I'm delighted to be in the company of uh, Mark Costello and Tom Taylor. Um, great to have your company, gents. This is a fantastic room for starters. Yeah, it is, yeah. We've um, we got it done um, beginning of last season. Um, the Sponsors Lounge, um, we had some uh, good support from the committee. They got the funding and the room's looking in, in uh, good condition again going into this season. So. I know that we've had a lot of uh, interesting match day sponsor already, which is great for support for the for the for the club, and um, yeah, it's um, it's a it's a good achievement to have this at the club, and um, yeah, we're happy with it. Uh, I could have wanted to do a little bit of a, a deeper delve, particularly with yourself, Tony. You know, because like this is going to be your last game for Clock. Where did it all start for you? Um, so I came to Clock when I was 16. One of the 16s came down. Had a bit of party go all the way through. Um, yeah, uh, Portugal ended up folding. Uh, I never really had an intention to leave until they folded, to be honest with you. And then Damien, who's like one of the main men down here at Clock, he was pestering me, pestering me dad. He'd been doing it for a while, and then once we folded, came down, and never looked back after them, really. And I'm guessing that you're getting so many friends down here. Yeah, I knew, well, I knew of quite a lot of him from um, like the school rugby games and stuff. I was familiar with a few of them, like George Eccleston in particular. Uh, our brothers played together as well at Fat Weef. So I knew a couple of lads who came down, a couple of lads from Portigo had come down before we folded. Um, so yeah, I knew quite a few. Um, and then obviously never looked back now, a lot of them would be best mates now, so it's been good. So again, just talking about you know how this room is set up. We're, we're set up in front of, uh, I'm going to describe it, I'm not going to get described it actually as a mural, but I'm going to describe it as a mural. <laughs> it's got all the different pictures of different teams down there. Uh, can you spot yourselves on them? I can, unfortunately. Top right, hammer on the top right at the top. That's the, the lady with the dark hair. So, yeah, I'm on a couple of them, I think. And then our chairman, um, Damien Grimes. Christ, he's on He's on near enough everybody. He's on one over here. Him. He's on every, near enough every team, Damien is. But yeah, so as you can see, it, it's come from our very first team uh, 100 years ago into the top left hand corner and then it's just worked its way down through the years of all the teams that's represented uh, the club and like I said it, I'm, it's, I'm proud to have this down at the club and the players can come in and have a, an after match drinking and, and look at the uh, what it means to us the badge and, and how proud we are of our, our, our history of 100 years of a rugby league. We touched on it a little bit didn't we, the other week when I was doing uh, like a little pre-match interview with you for, for, for the show which went out on the day. Um, and you do get that sense like you're really, really proud of your history and what you've achieved down the years. Yeah, like I said, there's been a, a, a massive people that's put the uh, the kit on for us over the years. And like I said, I think we're in a position this year to have probably the, uh, the strongest open edge setup we've ever had down at, down in the club's history. And, um, and the amount of prayers uh, and people, phone calls, text messages, handshakes at the sidelines when the games are going, after the games are... Uh, of people who's put these jerseys on and now watching the likes of Tom and, and the rest of the boys going out there representing the club, they're proud as well. So yeah, it's a it's a proud, it's a proud occasion. Occasion the Challenge Cup for for the lads. It means a lot to us and and it means a lot to all our past players as well. They've let us know about that how proud they are of us. Uh, so Tom, how long have you been down here? Uh, since I was 16, so about probably coming on 10 years now, just a bit longer. So, uh, joined under 16. That was my first year. So you're due testing one year, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't know if we've got enough time for that, but we'll, we'll count it on Saturday. Uh, so tell us what, what comes next then? Um, I'm moving over to Australia, go on Sunday, um, Toppin, who play, Colin Toppin, who played for us, he's on a club over there, West Mackay Tigers. Um, he just moved there this year, he spoke to their coach, said they're looking for a few players that I've fit the bill, he reckon, sent him a few clips over from some old clock games, and it just went from there really, he sent me a an offer over, so go over and have a crack. That's very exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. It, it came, honestly came out the blue. I was, I was sat in there actually with Gez on like a Friday night, and um, I was speaking to Topping, and I was like, I was like, right, probably won't be happening. And then it just kept going and kept going, and then next thing you know, I'm booking a flight. Uh, now, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm scared of cats or anything like that, but you know, I know you're going to a place where they've got snakes and spiders, <laughs> but they really kind of like, put me off. Have you done any research? <laughs> no, not really, to be honest with you. Um, We've got a few spiders here, don't we? I'm not too bothered by them. Um, snakes, though, we'll have to see. Take it as it comes. I, I can imagine if, if we were doing it, uh, I was going to say you want to be a millionaire, but you know, 
escape from the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you'll, be, you'll be the first one to get asked when you come back, won't you? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'll just find out about that as soon as I get there. Um, I'll, have, I'll have to be in the moment to find out if that's going to bother me or not. <laughs> um, so, so what's the plan when you get out? Have you got a job lined up? Have you got yeah, so the coach of the team I'm joining, he runs a steel warehouse, so I've just got a job straight there sorted as soon as I get there. Started as soon as I want, really. So, probably take some time, get you know, jet lag wore off, and then just crack on, really. Work and train rugby and that. Yeah. Have you done much shopping before? Uh, no, furthest I've ever been to Turkey, so a long flight might have uh, knocked me out a little bit. I thought he was going to say real then, Tony. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's second, that's second for <laughs> <laughs> So, you, you're not basically, are you? You know, you're sort of jumping straight into it, really. Yeah, I've, I'm at that point now in my life, so 26, may as well, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to be able to do it, do you know what I mean? So I think I'd regret it if I didn't have a dig. And I know I've always got this to come back to if, you know, things don't work out or if I, I miss it back over here, I know I can always come back. Um, what has this club meant to you over the years that you've been doing here? It's been brilliant. Um, obviously, came down at 16, obviously Portugal where I was folded, so... I went training for a few clubs and I went. I trained at clock and as soon as a few of the lads got on to me, it was like, you recognised me from school games and stuff. It made me feel welcome straight away. Damien was massive as well. He was very keen to like get me to come down. Um, so I felt like, felt wanted uh, at under 16 when I came. I felt like they wanted me here. I was like, they were, like a bit made up there was training. So I was like, I said to my dad, that's where I'm, I want to go. And you're the real centre of the community here, aren't you? You know, you're right in the middle of the of, of the place. And it's well fed by the other council estates that are around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, obviously we've got four acres, Sutton Manor, uh, nearby. Um, a lot of the younger kids' teams are full of kids from them earlier, so it gives them somewhere to go on a weekend and you know, midweek keep them out of trouble getting training and stuff. And, and that's where I wanted to come at, you know, because obviously this is key to everything that we've got going on around here. This is it. Uh, the amount of kids from the local area, like Tommy just said, we've got a big uh, estate over there in Four Acre and, and um, Sutton Manor, which is really close. And it's vital for have this club here, to be honest, um, to give these kids something to do, a sense of belonging, a sense of community. Um, times are hard, we know, financially and stuff. The club does, does so much for try and support families financially with regarding uh, kit and subs and boots and stuff like that. We can do out of all way we will. And this is what's um, put us on, a, 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 I think I've mentioned to be, to be to you before, Parky, about how it's put um, clock face now, uh, the open age on the map now, with the kids' teams really taking off down here. Um, they're getting stronger and stronger, good sense of community, good coaches, and these players are coming through and through, and this is what's going to keep our open age going. And yeah, I've, I've touched on it. I'd, I'd like every kid, mate, pro. It ain't going to happen. You encourage them for going and, and have a go at the pro ranks if they're good enough, and we'll always support them. But we want them to know they've got a club for life here and play the rugby down here and play in the NCL in Northwest Man, uh, men, men's league teams. So that's important to us. Well, I mean, we, we, I've said before, I've said it on her, I've mm. said it in the video, little video that I did, that, yeah. you know, the welcome which we've had since we've walked through the doors here has been absolutely fantastic. So, and I can imagine, we're, we're just visitors, you know, I'm, you know, like, I'm not used to this sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, so, yeah, we welcomed you down. It was a great uh, occasion last, last week when you was down watching the game. It was a cracking game, I thought. A little bit nail biting for myself and nervous towards the end for hang on. But yeah, I thought we did enough. And like I said, talking about the community parker, you seen last week how many people turned out for watch the game. It was absolutely littered with all all the locals, and I'm sure um, they're going to give Sid all a good welcoming as well on Saturday. Uh, what are you expecting from Sid? They're a class team. They're a pedigree. NCL Prem team, um, we know the task that's in front of us, Parker. We know we're, 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 we're going into the game underdogs with us last week, but that's not going to bother us. Um, I think they've got a few good strike players. Um, I've kept my eye on the on the full back, watched a bit of foot, footage on the full back. Um, solid nine, basis of a good team. The six and seven move the ball about well with a good mobile pack, good energy levels. It's going to be tough um, if we can dig in there and, and, and give them something to think about. Go into the sheds at half time, looking that we're, we're, we're close there with them. Then I'm sure that we can um, maybe nick that one as well Saturday if we uh, if we play our cards right. 
I'm keen to mention as well that with this obviously being Tommy's last game, yeah. there's some emotion around this as yeah. well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I've got a lot of time and respect for Tommy. Tommy Atford take this uh, opportunity with both fans and he gets the blessing and, 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 and the well wishes from the club. And I hope he goes over there and absolutely smashes you. So, like you said, Tom said he's been with us um, for a long time now through the, the junior setup as well. Um, probably a bit of a thorn in his side because I've put him in that many positions. I've had him full back, prop forward, 13, uh, centre. So, he's a versatile player. So, they gain some player over there when he goes over there because he can play a range of positions. And that's down to Tom because he's a class player. Gets stuck in. Um, uh, yeah, he's going to be sadly missed. He is. So is there any position you've not played then? That, 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 uh, that, that, that sort of round up back. I was going to say a wing, but I think you play me down as well. <laughs> um, no, <coughs> six and seven, nine. Yeah. You know, we've got good enough six, sevens and nines here, so I've never had played though, I think. I think that's about it though, isn't it? Yeah, I say, I've had you everywhere, Tom, haven't I? No, like I said, he's a versatile player and he's a proper, um, yeah, he's a proper team player and the lads think a lot of him, the club think a lot of him and I hope he can go out with a bang on Saturday and get that W for us, help contribute to that anyway. So if we turn up early and there's banners everywhere saying, give it to Tom, I hope not, I hope not, no, it's about winning on Saturday to be fair, like if, you know, obviously it's my last game, that's nice and that, but we could, that could have been that up the other week against the US, you know what I mean, more importantly we win, uh, the lads can go into round three and, you know, hopefully get a good... League One Championship, the Championship, and I don't know, get a good um, like proper t side as well, professional side. So, yeah, more important for the team win than me, I think. Gentlemen, thank you as always for welcoming us down. Uh, I wish you all the best for Saturday. Thank you very much. I hope that they, they send you off with a win. Cheers, mate. So do I. I think we got a chance, haven't we? Yeah, we'll be, all right. we'll be okay.